Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Daily Life, and today I'm here with Bernie Vandewall. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. You doing well? Um, Excellent. So I have some questions for you today. Okay. Hopefully I have some answers. Good. <laughs> um, so the first question is, what does it really mean to be a Christian? You know, that's a great question. I just had uh, somebody uh, in a restaurant ask me that the other night in Winnipeg, and uh, I told him uh, that's not an easy uh, question to answer in just a, a sentence or two, but I'll, I'll do my best, especially since just a few days ago I had a little bit of practice. Let me tell you what I think it is first by telling you what I think it's not. A lot of people think that Christianity at its core is about beliefs. Uh, that is, that Christianity is, is uh, what you believe. It, it's a series of statements or facts or assertions uh, that somebody sort of signs on to and, and says that they believe that's true. Uh, I think that's part of the Christian faith, but I don't think that's what it's all about. Uh, it, it helps to define what it's all about. It tells us what the Christian faith is all about, but it's not sort of the thing in itself. The second thing a lot of people think uh, the Christian faith is is about behaviors. That's primarily about how you behave, what you do and what you don't do. Uh, uh, the kind of things that, um, you know, you... Uh, you spend your time doing, you spend your energy doing, uh, and things like that. And that, of course, too, is an important part of the Christian faith, but I don't think it is the Christian faith itself. Uh, it, it flows from the Christian faith. It flows uh, from some of the beliefs, but it's not really the heart of the matter, the, the most important part of the Christian faith. Uh, I, would, I would suggest that the really important part of the Christian faith, the, the sort of center of it, uh, the, 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 the mid of the Christian faith is being in a relationship with Jesus. Uh, and uh, that, that can look a number of ways. But it, the one thing it is, is it's more than just him being your friend. It's more than him just being uh, your pal or even being uh, the one who sticks up for you. Uh, the Christian faith really is about the very person of Jesus somehow and mysteriously living his life in and through me. That is that the heart of, the, of Christianity uh, is Jesus living in believers, in uh, the church, the group of believers. That's what I think Christianity is all about. It's this, what theologians would call this intimate union with Jesus Christ. The beliefs explain that, talk about that, and the behaviors are those things that sort of flow from that, the way you act because of that. But the heart of the issue isn't belief, and it, uh, and it isn't behavior. Uh, more basically than that, it's being in this relationship with Jesus so close, so tight, that it's actually true to say that he lives within you. That's what I think uh, Christianity is all about. That's great. Thank you. Um, so the second question is, um, what does a Christian really have to do? Okay. okay. That's, and that's a great question from where we just came from, right? Because we're just talking about uh, beliefs and behaviors. Well, you can take that question a number of ways, and let me see if I can do a little bit with it. Um, the first thing I think you have to do is get back to the basics, and so the most important thing that you have to do is whatever it takes to uh, begin, uh, to continue, and to develop that relationship with Jesus Christ. That's, that's sort of the most important things that a Christian has to do. Uh, there are a number of ways that occur, and I think each of them contribute in their own special way. Uh, one of them would be uh, to spend time reading the scriptures, uh, which the Christian faith would assert is God's message to us, and particularly to those people in whom Christ lives. Uh, the second would be in prayer, and that is then entering into a conversation uh, with God in Christ, uh, letting him know 
our, our joys, our fears, our triumphs, our struggles. Uh, and the third thing I do is uh, I'd suggest is that uh, we be in relationship with other people who are indwelt uh, by Jesus, so that we're involved uh, in a, a local congregation, a local church, uh, if you will, uh, even reading scripture with them, reading the Bible with them, uh, and um, and praying with them. There are some other things that I think are really important. Uh, I think uh, is particularly important, and to not do those things, both that Scripture says we should do as Christians, and that Scripture says we shouldn't do. Uh, one of the things I think we often put off too long and sort of treat it as though it's just something we might do or might not is is to be baptized. Uh, and uh, Jesus uh, seems to imply in uh, the Bible that that's something that not only should every Christian do, but it's something that they sort of start their their relationship with Him with, uh, not something they put off for a long time. So that we do. Uh, we, we do. We meet also with other people. Uh, in a book called Hebrews, in chapter 10, we're told uh, as much as this relationship is between Jesus and you, uh, it's also between Jesus and the group of people that he indwells. And so we're actually commanded uh, to meet together uh, with the others. So we, we can't be individuals off on our own, even then we need to meet uh, with others. The list, I guess, could really go on on this, but I think those are some of the most important ones. Yeah. Um, so, this is a question was originally made for Dave, but I'm still going to ask you this question, because um, you are a teacher, okay. so it kind of applies to you. In youth ministries, what is the most okay. important thing a kid needs to know? The most important thing a kid needs to know in youth about youth ministry? Yeah. Well, I only get I only get one, eh? Here's the most important thing a kid needs to know about it. Hmm. Okay. I would. Say that because of, the, the, really, the answer I gave you in the last one, again, these are all fitting together really well, and that's great, that, uh, that youth should participate in the youth ministry uh, of their local church or of a local church, not simply to get something out of it, but also to put something into it. Um, that our job is not merely sort of to be consumers, not merely people who buy things and and get involved in these things so what, for what we can get out of them, but perhaps even more importantly, especially for those people who have Jesus living within them, uh, that to uh, act like Jesus, our primary job is not to get from other people, even people within the church, but it's actually to contribute to the lives of others, uh, perhaps especially uh, to those people in youth group. Uh, and so I would say that one of the most important things that somebody needs to know about youth ministry, uh, especially for the youth, uh, is uh, it's more important than what they receive. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, the you're welcome. One of the next questions is um, why do Christians go to church? Big question. <laughs> Well, I'm a, we're, it's like we're on the same page on this, isn't it? Because we're, we're, we keep on back to this. Well, I guess I kind of answered that a little bit already. Uh, I would say, one, uh, to contribute. You go to church to contribute, to minister, uh, to encourage uh, the other people uh, who share with you uh, this life with Jesus that lives within you. And so you, you go to contribute. Uh, you go uh, to worship God together with other people. Um, sometimes to remind yourself that you're not in this alone, uh, because sometimes uh, the Christian faith can be tough, and you might feel like you're all alone and nobody understands you, and so you go uh, to, to present a united voice uh, to yourself, uh, perhaps even to God, uh, and to one another to remind other people that they're not alone in this uh, either. 
I think you go uh, to be uh, edified is a word that some people would use to be built up, to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to be taught, to worship with other people. Um, you go to contribute, to contribute to both uh, the things that need to happen within that group, but you also go to contribute as a member of that group to, to people beyond the walls uh, of the church, beyond the group. And maybe the last one, I'll go back to that Hebrews 10 and 25 passage. One of the reasons we go is that uh, God seems to think that it's a really good idea for us uh, and actually commands us to. Uh, one of the first things that God notices uh, in Genesis, uh, after he's finished creation, right? And for those of you who know the story, it says God created uh, light, and that was good. And he goes on, and he creates uh, land and sea, and that's good. And he creates other things, and that's good, and that's good, and that's good, and that's good. And, that's good. Uh, and when he wraps it all up, he says that's very good. But when you get into the next chapter, one of the things that God, God says something's not good. So you have this rhythm, good, 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 very good, and then not good. And, and we are sort of shocked by that, not good, that there's something not good in God's perfect creation. And the not good thing was for humanity to be alone, for Adam to be alone, uh, because we were made not only to be uh, in relationship with God, but we were made in such a way that we need to be in relationship with one another. Uh, and in the church, uh, we need to be in relationship not only with those around us sort of physically, but those who are like us spiritually, again, uh, so that we can um, encourage one another, teach one another, hear one another, laugh with one another, sometimes cry with one another. Uh, so those, I think, are the major reasons why we need to go to church. Yeah, um, when you were talking about Genesis, I thought, um, like when you were saying good, I thought of um, a thing that Bill Crosby did called Genesis. And oh, called no, the Noah thing? or Oh, Genesis, okay, yeah. Genesis, and then it's like good, 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 and then he creates a human, and then it's like, doesn't say anything, so I thought. Right, good. yeah, well, when he creates humanity, he says very good. Right? He's a good, 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 good. He creates humanity. It's very good. Uh, but then a little bit later, when he notices that every other animal has another of its kind uh, to be with, he notices that this guy Adam's all alone, and he says, that's not good. Yeah. I wonder if sometimes he, he did that so that we would realize that he explicitly, on purpose, wants to make it clear uh, that we're not sort of to be... Uh, on our own, even when we're with him, and that's one of the neat things about that story, is that Adam's in a, a close relationship with God, but even that God thinks isn't enough for Adam, and that Adam needs uh, to relate with other people. That's great. And this... Cool. Um, when I emailed you the questions, question five said surprise question. I know. Cause it, I don't know how I feel about that. But are we, are we going to do, is this the surprise question time? Yes. Okay. You can go. Um, okay. It's a big question, so I put it as a surprise question. The question is, what is the purpose to life? Oh. You know what? When I was a young kid, I used to go to a little Sunday school where there might, weren't many of us kids. Uh, uh, and so we got a lot of individual attention from the teachers. Uh, and it was a Sunday school where, we actually, where they actually sort of gave us uh, questions like you just gave and then also gave us the answers, taught us what the answers meant. And, and so it's kind of funny uh, because that's the very first question. Uh, it, it, when I learned it, they used some of the old language from a couple hundred years ago, because mm -hmm. that's where this uh, came from. Uh, but uh, you just reworded it in a different way. Uh, when I learned it, the question went like this, what is the chief end of humanity? Or, you know, basically as you put it, uh, why are we here? Yeah. And the answer was that the chief end of humanity was to worship God, and to love him forever. 
and that I think still comes out in you know again this is very interesting how it's it's talking about, again about what we've already talked about that we were created not only to be in relation with God but in that relationship with God uh, uh, to worship Him uh, to to uh, to serve Him uh, and, and that sort of our sweet spot when humanity does that it's in its sweet spot but what's interesting about that question to me again is that when it asks the question it doesn't talk about the individual it says what's the the chief end of humanity sort of for all of us and it's that all of us worship God uh, and enjoy him forever and so that worship and that doing things for God and that responding properly to God uh, in the way that we ought to is not only something that we do as individuals but we're actually created to do it together. And so it's both and. I both need to do that, uh, but I need to also do that with other people who are, who are doing it. That's, uh, that's what I think uh, the purpose of humanity is. That's what I think the purpose of life is, uh, is to be in relationship with God, uh, both as an individual and uh, as a group, uh, but not only to be in a relationship with him, but to, uh, in that relationship, uh, enjoy him, to worship him, uh, and to serve him forever. Great. Thank you for coming. Um, it's great to be here. Um, usually at the end of... Um, the episode, we would ask some people questions if they're watching, but right now it looks like no one's really watching. Ouch! <laughs> it's just two of us, so if you guys have any questions, you can comment. I can get a hold of you, maybe, and we could possibly answer them another time. We sure could. Yeah. Great. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye.